नमस्कार दोस्तों मैं शिवानंद उपाध्याय आपका स्वागत करता हूं हमारे यूट्यूब चैनल केमिस्ट्री एकेडमी फॉर आई टी जेई एंड नीट दिस इज अवर प्रॉब्लम सीरीज फॉर जेई एडवांस वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द थ्योरी थ्रू प्रॉब्लम्स होप दिस विल बी यूजफुल फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू आई विल रिक्वेस्ट यू टू लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब अवर चैनल This section contains seven multiple choice questions. Each question has four choices A, B, C, and D. Out of which one or more are correct. So let us uh, discuss the first question. First question is select the correct coordinates for octahedral void in FCC unit cell. So these options are given, and here there is a diagram of the cube where we can discuss the coordinates of tetrahedral void and octahedral void. So we know that. they are asking for octahedral void but we'll discuss about how to calculate for tetrahedral void as well as octahedral void so this is x axis along x axis edge length is a and this is y axis and this is the z axis right so here when we are discussing suppose if i have to calculate uh, the coordinates of this edge length uh, which is along y axis so i will move because the center of the edge length will be here so i i am going to move a distance of a by 2 along the y axis i am not moving along z and x axis so the coordinates of this will be 0 0 0 0 a by 2 and 0 so here same way we have to go through the option in this cube we have to move three these examples so the first one is a by 4 a by 4 and a by 4 this will be the origin and we know that one of the body diagonal of the cube will be this so the coordinates of this point will be 0 0 and 0 so if i move a distance on this body diagonal we know that in the, on this body diagonal all the coordinates if if i take any points the x y and z coordinate will be same right if it is passing through origin and uh, i'm talking about this particular diagonal so in this particular diagonal the coordinates of x y and z axis will be the same one so here when we are calculating what is the coordinate for tetrahedral void we know that this is equal to a by 4 a by 4 and a by 4 this will be the coordinate and if i calculate what is the distance that distance is equal to x2 minus x1 whole square y2 minus y1 whole square z2 minus z1 whole square under root so on solving we are going to get that this distance is equal to under root 3a by 4 with respect to this corner this distance is for tetrahedral void t1 same way if i have to calculate what is the coordinate of this point so i will first find out what is the coordinate of the corner nearer to this tetrahedral void so the coordinates of this corner will be i will move along the x axis then y axis and z axis and will reach here so the coordinates of this corner will be a a and a and now from this i can find out what is the coordinate of this so the distance between these two points should be under root 3a by 4 and all the coordinates on this point should be equal so i can write that the coordinates of this point should be 3a by 4 3a by 4 and 3a by 4 so again you can find out that the distance between these two is a minus 3a by 4 will be a by 4 and here also a by 4 and here also a by 4 so if we square and take under root the distance will be under root 3a by 4 right so for any tetrahedral void if i have to reach i will uh, do the same thing first i will find out the corners of one of the points suppose if i want to discuss the coordinates of this tetrahedral void i want to know about this right so this is t1 this is t2 i can say t for tetrahedral void this is t3 if i want to know what is the coordinates of t3 i will move in the z direction so i will reach at this corner and the coordinates of this corner will be 0 0 and a so i can say that the coordinates of this tetrahedral void should be a by 4 a by 4 and 3 a by 4 because the difference of x2 Minus x one or y two minus y one or z two minus z one is either a by four or minus a by four. Like here, if you see a by four minus zero will be a by four, and here also a by four, and this will be minus a by four. So minus a by four whole square will be the same thing as a by four whole square. So that is the point. If I have to calculate the coordinates of any tetrahedral void, this is the method. First, we'll calculate the coordinates of In the corners nearest to that tetrahedral void, and then we'll see that x one, uh, x two difference, y one, y two difference. The difference of that x two, x one, y two, y one should be a by four, either positive or negative. So that is the idea to 
find out the coordinates of tetrahedral void. Now let us move through this option. How to solve this option? Let us go through it. A by 4, A by 4 and A by 4. So we have to find out octahedral void. So if I see that in this queue, what is A by 4? So I have to move along the x-axis A by 4 distance. Then I have to move along the y-axis A by 4 distance. And then I have to move along the Z axis A by 4 distance. So this is a position of tetrahedral void. So the first option is corresponding to tetrahedral void. This is a position of tetrahedral void. Now again for B option, if I see here in X direction, I have to move A distance. Then in Y direction, I have to move A by 2 distance. Then in Z direction, I have to move A distance. So I will reach here which will be your edge center. So this point will be an edge center. So I can say that this is corresponding to B point and it is a position of octahedral void. So this B is representing an octahedral void. Let us go through the C option. In X direction, I have to move a distance of A by 2, right, from here to here. Then I have to move a distance in Y direction, A distance, so I will reach here. And then I have to move a distance here, a distance in along the z-axis. So again, it is an edge center. Edge center is a position of octahedral void. So I can say here that this will be the position of octahedral void. So this is related to C option. While this T1 is related to A option, right? T1 is related to A option. The fourth option is D option. We can find out this D option. We have to move along the axis axis at a distance of 3a by 4 okay so near to this point this corner 3a by 4 then i have to move along y axis a by 4 distance i have to move along this y axis and then 3a by 4 distance along this z axis so somewhere here right so corresponding to this point i'm going to get a tetrahedral void here this will be a tetrahedral void i can also check that uh, the coordinates given here is matching or not so first i will find out what are the coordinates of this point x direction a z, dire z direction a right so i can write here that a zero and a so now the coordinate of this point should be if you here a then it is 3a by 4 if zero is there then a by 4 and here a is there then again 3a by 4 so i can say now that this is matching 3a by 4 a by 4 and 3a by 4 is matching with this d option so again i can say that this is representing a tetrahedral void so they are asking in this question about octahedral void. So answer will be B, C, but I have discussed that how to calculate for tetrahedral void also. Moving to question number two, the ZNS zinc blend structure is cubic structure. The unit cell may be described as a face centered sulfide ion sub lattice with Z zinc ions in the center of alternating mini cubes made by partitioning the main cube into eight equal parts. How many near uh, how many nearest neighbors does each ZN2 plus have and what angle is made by the lines connecting any ZN2 plus to any two of its nearest neighbors. So the first thing we should know about ZNS uh, that it is FCC it is given in the question also ZNS and we are discussing about zinc blend can be zinc blend or woodzite. So we are talking here about zinc blend which is FCC with respect to anion and cation is present this all explanation sub lattice and alternating mini cubes and we have divided into eight equal parts we know that a big cube can be divided into eight equal parts eight small cubes whose length is half of that of big cube so the center of each small cube will be the position of tetrahedral word so all these languages telling that zn2 plus ion is present in tetrahedral word if Zn2 plus ion is present in tetrahedral void, we have discussed also that in practice set 1, we have discussed that how to discuss the tetrahedral void in FCC crystal. So one tetrahedral void can be formed by the help of four point, one corner point in this cube and three face center points in this cube. So I'm not showing the position of all the ions. I'm interested in the position of one corner ion. So this corner ion will be definitely sulfide ion because it is FCC with respect to sulfide ion. One 
face center here this is bottom face center so this is also sulfide ion left hand side face center this is also sulfide ion so with respect to this corner we are discussing so this face center this face center and corresponding to this point there are three faces related so i am now discussing this was the bottom face now i am discussing this front face so the center of this front face i can show over here that this is the center of the front face so three face center and one corner if i combine these points i'm going to get a regular tetrahedron this regular tetrahedron will be there tetrahedron will be here it is not the edge center so don't confuse with the edge center it will be somewhere here i can show that the, this is the regular tetrahedron and that is the center and this void is tetrahedral void so when we are discussing this tetrahedral void in case of ionic crystal always the cation is surrounded by an ion the nearest neighbor of a cation will be an anion so they are discussing about that so first thing is easy since zn2 plus ion is present in tetrahedral void so its coordination number when we are discussing about coordination number of zn2 plus ion that is equal to 4 and the nearest neighbor of this zn2 plus is the sulfide ion only right so I can say that if I take any point here, I can draw here, uh, this point we can take, I'm moving. They are saying that what is the angle, right? So this is uh, one sulfide ion, this is uh, the Zn2 plus ion and this is another sulfide ion. And we know that there is formation of a regular tetrahedron. So in regular tetrahedron, this is the zinc ion. Zn2 plus ion is surrounded by four sulfide ions. So any two nearest anion if I take of this cation, it is going to make an angle of 109 degree 28 minutes and that can be 28 minutes can be written as approximately 5 right so 109.5 degree so by looking this we got that c will be the answer question number three a piece of copper we know that copper is a metal and when we are discussing about a piece of copper and another of germanium we know that germanium silicon they are semiconductor right when they have some uh, um, there are two type of semiconduction intrinsic and e extrinsic semiconduction so if germanium has some defect then it is known as intrinsic semiconduction and germanium has added with some uh, foreign species then it is known as either n type or p type that is known as extrinsic semiconduction so here we are discussing about pure substance right so here this germanium has can act as a semiconductor and this semiconductor is intrinsic semiconductor right we are not discussing about extrinsic here intrinsic and it is because of the defects so on increasing temperature the defects is going to increase on decreasing temperature the defect is going to so this semiconduction on at high temperature defects will be more so semiconduction will be more in case of metal right uh, they, they are conductors and there are free electron clouds so in case of metal we know that on increasing temperature why i'm discussing about temperature here because are cooled from room temperature to 80 kelvin so they want to know the effect of temperature that's why we are discussing about temperature metal on increasing temperature their resistance is going to increase resistance will increase because we know that metals can be de defined as there is a electron c cloud and there is positively charged kernels on increasing temperature those positively charged kernels will vibrate more so if the vibration will be more then the electrons are passing nearby those kernels if the kernels will vibrate more they will collide with the electrons passing between them so the chances of collision will increase and the resistance will increase so here we can say that if a piece of copper and germanium is cooled, if we are decreasing temperature, on decreasing temperature, uh, the conductivity, they are asking about the resistance. So we know that resistance and conductivity are inversely proportional. We can say that in case of metal on increasing, uh, decreasing temperature, resistance will decrease. So copper metal, the resistance will decrease. And for germanium, we know that germanium is a semiconductor. So on increasing temperature, conductivity is increasing, means resistance is decreasing. So on decreasing temperature, resistance will increase. So I can say here that in case of uh, third question, we are getting C option. Copper decreases and that of germanium 
increases resistance of copper metal is going to decrease and resistance of germanium is going to increase so answer will be c question number four zinc sulfide exists in two different forms zinc blend and woodzite both occurs as four four coordination compounds choose the correct option among the following so you should know about this if you don't know we are discussing about two type of crystalline structure of ZNS. One is known as zinc blend. So in case of zinc blend, you should know that it has a diamond type of structure. It is FCC with respect to anion. This line you have to remember. It is FCC with respect to anion and cation is present in tetrahedral voids. Cation is present in tetrahedral void. With respect to this line, if you know about this line, then we can find out many information from here like I can say that the number of sulfide ions, number of sulfide ions per unit cell will be 4. ZNS formula we know, ZNS. So here it is telling that the ratio of cation and anion will be same. So from here I can say that ZN2 plus ion per unit cell is also equals to 4. Now if you know the first line, we can say that the cation is present in tetrahedral void per unit cell. We know that tetrahedral void is equal to 8. So if we calculate that what is the percentage of tetrahedral void occupied, percentage of tetrahedral void occupied will be 50% because ZN2 plus is sitting in tetrahedral void and total 8 tetrahedral voids are there. So we are getting 50% and if a system is, if any crystalline system or structure is symmetric, it will be more stable. It is a natural law that symmetric things are more stable. So there are eight tetrahedral voids. If we want to fill it symmetrically, we can say that alternate tetrahedral void will be occupied. Same way, when we are discussing about woodzite, when we are discussing about woodzite, again, its formula is same, that is ZNS, but here, its crystalline structure is different. They are not allotropes. Allotrope word is used for element, not for compound. So it is HCP with respect to anion. So if you know this point, right, and cation is present in tetrahedral void. So in case of woodzite, if you remember this line, then other things you can logically frame out. Like we can say that it is HCP. I am taking uh, that hexagonal prism as unit cell. So number of sulfide ions per unit cell is equal to 6. Number of, because formula is 1 is to 1. So the number of Zn2 plus ions per unit cell is equal to 6. Number of tetrahedral voids is 2 times the number of atoms. Atoms per unit cell is 6. So tetrahedral voids will be 12. So again, if you calculate percentage tetrahedral void occupied, so that is equal to 6 divided by 12 into 100. That is 50%. So percentage of tetrahedral void occupied here and here will be same. The coordination number of cation here and here will be same because both in both cases the cation is present in tetrahedral void. And the definition of tetrahedral void is it is a void which is equidistant from four, four atoms or ions and on joining those atoms there should be a formation of regular or formation of tetrahedral. So now if we go through the options given, zinc blend has a BCC structure, so this is wrong. Then the second option, zinc blend has FCC structure and woodzite is SCP structure, this is correct. Zinc blend as well as woodzite have SCP structure, that is wrong. D option, zinc blend as well as woodzite have a CCP structure, this is also wrong, right? So many questions can be framed if you know the first line of both the crystals, right?